Hello everybody, I'm John, and this is the Midnight Paint and Body Channel. In this video, we're going to be trying to figure out what went wrong with the paint job on this truck. Was it poor prep, poor materials, crappy parts? We're going to dig in, we're going to fix it, we're going to see if we can decipher what the problem is. So guys, our patient today, this week, this 1994 Dodge truck. You know, the cool kids will call this a first gen. I'll call it a 1994. So, as you can see, from a glance, it looks really good. Uh, and just before I start going over this thing, guys, I am not criticizing anyone else's work. I am far from perfect. But I want to get your opinions on what's going on with this thing. So, at a first glance, no, the only thing that really stands out to me is that you can see that the truck was painted in pieces. So we kind of have a bunch of different shades. You know, the hood's a little different. You know, the door is a little lighter than the cab corner. Then the box is a little lighter. Um, that's a real risk you take painting a color like this in pieces and uh that's what i've always found it just doesn't really work out too well but mainly what we've got going on here with this thing now this fella original owner he spent let's just say 20 plus thousand dollars having this truck done it was all new panels tailgate box sides cab corners doors rockers fenders he said within a year, it was all starting to rust. Now, he went back to the shop that did it. Um, now, I don't know who did it, guys. And then again, I'm not, I don't want to be that guy that's criticizing. Um, all I know, he said it was a local shop. But that's, uh, that's all we need to know. But he said within a year, it was rusting. He went back to them. They would do nothing for him. You know, they said it was his fault because he didn't put mud flaps on the truck. You know, it was from rock chips. Now, I will say, um, to war, you know, warrantying stuff like this, if it's rock chips, yeah. I mean, rocks are tougher than paint. That's just the way it is. But once it's doing this, that should have been warrantied. I mean, look at this thing, you guys. It is absolutely terrible. It is blistering everywhere. So, it has been, I think he said four or five years since it was done. So, now you see, this was all new panels. And man, oh man, this thing is, she is rusty. So, now let's take a quick walk around the other side. I think our tailgate's okay. We're all blistered down here. Super bad here. So, as you can see, it's uh, unfortunately it's a mess. And even the inside, a little bit on the pinch weld, but then, you know, we have. It's gonna darken here, but stuff like that going on. Now I know the guy looks after it. This old truck's his pride and joy. He keeps it washed, but uh, yeah, it's just pretty rough. So basically, what I'm gonna be doing, uh, hopefully, we're just painting from the line down, and we'll be painting the whole box because there is a lot of you know, this kind of stuff going on. I probably will take the box off, but I think what I'm going to do to start is just kind of strip off a bunch of the paint on the bottom of the truck, then I'll take it outside and sandblast the whole bottom. I'll leave the box on for now because it's easier than wheeling it out, wheeling the box outside on a cart in the snow. And hopefully as we dig into this thing, we'll see what was used on it. We'll see, I mean, did they skip putting a good epoxy primer on? Did they... Just use some cheap direct-to-metal urethane primer. 
I have no idea, but we're gonna get, dig into this thing, guys, and let's figure out what went wrong. Well, let's do a little examination here, guys, and see what we're finding. So, we'll start here. Now, I know this truck used to be red, so obviously it didn't get a new fender. Um, it must have been good enough to uh, not have to replace, obviously, so we still had the red paint there. But now, something I kind of said right from the start was I wondered if maybe somebody had just used some shitty direct-to-metal urethane primer and not epoxied. Um, I suspect that is the case because I am only seeing one primer. Um, now like this is really really heavy scale you know this is serious rust going on in this thing. Um, now something I have been asked before when I do these whenever I do rocker panels I strip them to bare clean metal so that I'm putting good epoxy primer and then my high build before I paint it. Um, guys have asked me why I stripped that black coating off and that, that is exactly why. So I suspect this was probably, you know, sealed and painted over the black e-coat. You know, moving back, you know, this doesn't explain why we're getting big rust blisters in the middle of panels where there was nothing you know, no chips to start, or there didn't appear to be. Whether it's just this is really bad primer, I don't know. Um, you know, our scale, like it, it's rust all the way underneath. As you can see. So I would expect around here, now when these new bedsides were welded on, they would have been plug welded around this perimeter, and then this would have been ground smooth, so this would have been all bare metal. So I'm thinking they just didn't put a good primer on there. You know, if they would have put a good epoxy primer on there, and then treated the inside of the panels as well, I mean, that's something I do. I know it's not something everyone does. But, uh, you know, that kind of gives us a little bit of insight as to why this rusted so bad. I mean, look at how deep this stuff is. I am afraid that once I hit some of this with a sandblaster, I know here for sure we're going to have a hole. You know, I wasn't uh, really wanting to actual, do actual surgery on this truck. I didn't have it on my estimate. It was just to clean up rust, but... It does look like I'm going to be welding in a few pieces there for sure. We'll see what else we find, but I'm going to con continue stripping a bit of paint off. Uh, the reason I'm doing this, I like to just take a lot of the paint off before sandblasting. It just makes a lot less work with the sandblaster. Um, you know, I don't have like a big industrial setup. I've just got a regular shot blaster and uh, a regular air compressor. So anyway, guys, I'm going to continue on with this. Uh, probably next time you see it, we'll have it outside. It's warmed up a little bit today. It's only like minus six, so it won't be bad to go out there and sandblast. And we had uh, minus 30 last week, so thankfully we're past that. But anyway, I'm going to carry on. We'll bring you back when we get her outside. Well guys, there's a first little bit sandblasted and it is way worse than I thought it was going to be. We are rusted through everywhere. 
this we're through all the way all around here all down here through down here I still need to work at this some more to get the rest of that rust out of there but oh boy so this is the part of doing this kind of stuff that really sucks is uh, you know doing an estimate on something and then having to tell a customer that uh, well it's gonna take substantially more to get this thing back to where it was So, I'm going to refill the blaster and just keep on going and uh, just see how bad it is, I guess. Well, I don't know how much of that got on camera because when I went back to the camera it was stopped, but that was not a smooth bed removal what a pain in the ass but something I run into every time there's a bunch of crap added on so there was a bunch of wiring added on so there's grounds drilled to the floor that I didn't see and then the biggest problem I had taking this box off now these frames have an access hole to go straight up to the bed bolts well it had some sort of an aftermarket trailer hitch camper bar thing that utilized those holes for bolting it on so I wasn't able to get at any of those bolts. I had to use uh, an impact swivel on an angle and a bunch of heat. So I probably spent four hours taking the rear four bolts out of that box. There was a point where I almost said, screw it, the box is staying on. So that's the kind of thing guys doing this stuff for a living that uh, you know, you don't get paid for those extra hours, but sometimes, yeah. Sometimes these jobs are just a pain in the ass. Anyway, so the box is off. Um, so I kind of showed you guys yesterday outside. So it turns out this thing is rotten. So we are rusted through all the way around the lip. Rusted through up here. Um, the other side is much the same. The other side actually has some holes up in here. So I talked to the customer last night and I told him I had to order some wheel arch panels. You know, it really sucks because this guy, you know, paid top dollar to have full bedsides put on this truck. You know, it's only four or five years ago. And now we're having to cut into them and put repair panels in. But I bought the wheel arch panels. I've got them coming. I figure I should be able to maybe just trim around here we're going to stay below this body line and then i can put those wheel arch panels in that's going to take care of all this so i don't know why this thing rusted so badly um you know i mean did they not treat that inside panel before welding this one over top because it does look like it may have had um these wheel arch extensions put in well maybe not because we've got matching different colors of paint in there so those must be originals so so they must have welded these over rusty panels without treating anything that's all i can figure but uh yeah this box turned into a bit of a disaster for sure you can see how deep all that scale is the hole there we're all rusted through back here as well i mean i've done seems like it's it feels like dozens of trucks I've done bedsides and panels and you know I use these aftermarket panels all the time um, one thing I tell all my customers when they leave is that I'm I'm good for it if there's any problems and I've had a few minor comebacks over the years um, things you know maybe just a little bit of little bits of rust starting and I'll just take care of it but nothing like this so, anyway guys, enough babbling. Um, I'm gonna just kinda reorganize in here. Uh, get this thing off to the side. I should have the panels tomorrow, but for now we can get the truck back inside and work on that. All right, so back on the truck. So I got all this sandblasted yesterday. Uh, I just dust everything with a light coat of aerosol etching primer. 
it just stops all that pitting from flash rusting being it's so damp outside but you can see it's uh it was really really deep scale but fortunately we're not through so i'm gonna move on to feathering all this stuff back um, i do still need to take the doors off the truck and clean up all the inners now this one had a i think it was this one so a little bit of rust along the bottom was got a really nasty bunch of rust in here it was kind of dark there but so we'll get to that after First off, I'm just gonna kind of get the outside done. It just saves getting the inside of the truck all full of dust while I'm sanding all this stuff back. Well, she just keeps on giving, so. Kind of feathered everything back towards the back. Back here where it looked good and I didn't hit it with the sandblaster. Uh, it's gonna have to go back outside because that is thick, thick rust. So, I'll see what I find on the other side before I take her back out. We're gonna need to clean that up. And then one other thing, customer pointed out. So, there must have been a repair here on this fender. We'll pick that up so you can see it's cracked. Now you can see it's starting to swell. The uh, moisture is getting underneath it. So didn't really want to get into color up here on the fender, but Well, so the first thing I see there is that we have body filler right on top of paint. So, for whatever reason, somebody's chosen just to fill right over the paint for whatever was there, probably a dent. And now you can see it's all rusty underneath there, so I'm gonna carve that one back a little further and then uh, a little filler on there. While well, we're in the booth here, guys, masked up for some primer. So, like I said before, these doors still have to come off and I need to sandblast the inside, but I figure doing it this way, let's just get one side coated in advance and then I just have to worry about the outs, the inside once they're off. So, there were a couple of dents. Now, this is old filler where uh, the cab corner's been sectioned in. There's some filler I've done where there was a couple of dents. Now, so just to kind of show you, so I, I ended up taking this outside and sandblasting it one more time because I had uh, some rust in the bottom of the cab corners I'd missed. So you can see we're all nice and clean. Now you can also see just how deeply pitted this all is. Now, now to give you an idea, so for me doing some filler here, that shows you where those pits have been filled up with filler. Now, the way I like to do these, right or wrong, I don't know, but I, I like to do my epoxy primer and high build so that I know I'm getting the epoxy right into those pits. And then if it needs some filler afterwards, a little bit more primer, so be it. So there's that side there. Let's we'll have a quick look at the other side before I get primer on it. So, same idea here, you know, really deep pitting, and you know, like I kind of pointed out too, like, oh, all I'm seeing is this primer, so whatever they used on it, they didn't put an epoxy or even an etch primer down first, it looks like it was just this stuff, so, to me, that is probably a lot of the reason it rusted so bad. And I mean, that's just me just trying to, uh, you know, figure out what, 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 trying to figure out what went wrong with this job. So, but yeah, so let me know in the comments, guys, what you think of something like this. I mean, should this have been warrantied by the shop that did it? 
Now, again, I don't know who worked on it and I don't want to ruffle feathers. I live in a small town, but you know, I'm surprised that somebody didn't go good for this. I mean, you know, maybe had they caught it when it was a year old, when the customer told me he went and complained about it rusting, maybe it wouldn't have gotten so bad, but anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm going to mix up some epoxy. I'll show you real quick what I'm using. So I'll be using this. This, so this is a PPG epoxy primer. So I'll probably give it two coats of that. And then actually in this case, I'll probably use this Upal urethane high build. So that's what I'll be using on top. Um, I either use this or this Shopline 355. I do have the, the Shopline system, but this stuff is really good for when you really want to fill stuff. So I think for those uh, deep pits in the metal, this is going to be good for this one. So I'm going to mix up some primer and get going on this and then we'll go back and sand on the box for a while. So this is two coats of epoxy primer. So now we're going to move on to two coats of uh, the urethane high build primer. Well, I'm back. It is the next day again. Uh, it's actually already after lunch. My day kind of got away from me today with some other errands, picking up freight, sometimes kind of running a business on your own uh, gets in the way of doing the actual work. But so I'll show you what we got going on here, guys. So these are what I ordered for this truck. So these are typical repair panels. Now, obviously, that is a lot more metal than what we need. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. So, the bulk of our rust is this lip. It's rusted through all the way around. We're rusted through up into here. Um, a little bit at the back, but we're going to have to make a piece down there. So, I mean, yes, I could have made a lot of this stuff. But at 90 bucks a piece, it made more sense just to go with these. Probably all I'm going to actually use off of these is from about that line down. I'm going to trim these out and I'm just going to use that section of them. Now, unfortunately, these only come down to here and our rust continues down. So this is going to be a bit of an ugly spot to have to make because it's got a bunch of body lines there. But Anyway, it is what it is, so let's get started and start uh, cutting this thing apart. Well, turns out our inner wheel houses are rusted out as well. So. Ah. You know, did that play into this bedside rusting out so quickly, putting it over top of the old wheelhouse? Maybe, I don't know. So I've already had to tell this customer once that it was going to cost more money and more parts. Uh, so I need to decide what I'm going to do here, guys. I think, I mean, our lip is okay to there and there. So I think I will just quickly make a piece 
fur there and just just do it get it done so this is the kind of thing you run into with rust repair rust repair but having you know i guess as much experience as i have doing rust repair i mean i i would have replaced those but anyway guys i'm gonna start making up a little piece for there i'll kind of show you what i'm gonna do i've already kind of planned it out in my head so let's get going So I just cut out a piece of 20 gauge sheet metal, put it in the brake, put a bend in it. Now, so what we want here is to match this curve. So we're gonna use our shrinker stretcher and stretch the metal up here so that it causes that to bend down. Now, I did show this tool in my last video, um, pretty basic. Um, metalworking stuff but figured I'd show you guys and it's kind of, it's kind of cool how it works so we want that to match there so we will use our panel to match that curve so we're gonna start stretching along here until we start getting that curve right there You can see how that stretches that stretches that metal there. Brings in our curve, so let's just give it a try. I think I actually definitely went way too far. Hold on. Come on, camera. Let me make sure we're working. Alright. Well, I mean, we don't need all of this anyway. I was going to be cutting that round about there. And I think if I do that, I'm going to be in the ballpark. So let's just check this on our panel here. Yeah, usually I'm more cautious than that than to go... Uh, way too far like that. Now I could put the shrinking teeth in and bring that back a little bit, but I think we might even just put a couple of little pie cuts because we're going to be welding this all in anyway. So maybe we'll just do that. Well, definitely not the best demonstration of the old shrinker stretcher, but you get the idea how that tool works anyway. So. I just put a couple of pie cuts in there and got it fitting the shape. So, thing is, we're going to be welding this all in there anyway. So, by the time I weld that entire seam, it's not a big deal just to buzz those couple of little cuts. So, so I'm going to get this guy clamped into place, and then we'll start trimming out that old metal and figuring out what we're welding to. Presser always comes on when I turn the camera on. So what I'm going to do here, guys, I'm going to zip cut through this new metal and the old metal. So I'll zip through both of them, and then I'll start doing some tack welds. Um, that the old metal, that piece, I'll be able to remove from the backside as I zip along. That way, I'm going to end up with just a nice clean butt weld, just edge to edge, no overlapped metal. So. I think I'll just start at this end. I'll probably kind of work my way around it, just do tack welds, then refit my panel, and make sure our wheel lip is the same shape, and then we'll move on from there. So there's our piece kind of welded in. I mean, we didn't need much of that bend anyway, so 
Um, so I didn't bother recording that. I mean, it's pretty basic and I just wanted to whip through it, being that, uh, yeah, it's just a little extra something I'm doing. Just wanted to do it quick. So I'm going to just clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna finish welding all this. And then I'm gonna kind of clean up all of this inner panel as much as I possibly can. Get some primer on it and then we'll start uh, making our replacement panel fit the hole. So I've cleaned up our inner panel best I could. Put some primer on it and then I actually brushed some seam sealer over the welds just to hopefully seal everything up nice in there. So I've taken our repair panel and cut away 80% of it and this is what we're left with. So this is the piece we're going to be using. So this guy I will be doing basically the same thing. I'm going to clamp it in place nice and tight and then I'm going to zip cut around the edge so that I have a nice fine butt weld or a nice butt match. So we're not overlapping metal. Uh, so yeah, I think this is gonna work out well. Uh, Sticking on the seam sealer a little bit. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of keeping below this body line. Like I said, this is just gonna save some work, guys. So having that body line there is gonna put some strength there. So it's gonna make it a little easier to weld and a little less finishing. I should just have to body work a little bit around here. You know, we're not getting into body working the whole panel if we're putting in that whole repair panel. Uh, yeah. So, I think I'm gonna go have a cup of coffee. Contemplate my life choices. See if I can uh, figure out how to register my business as a non-profit organization. <laughs> anyway guys, I'll be back at this shortly. I need a break. So here's our main piece put in and uh, welded up and ground down. So it all went pretty good. Um, I've got just a little warpage here. I've got just a slight little dive there. So well, I'll take care of that body work, but that's, that's why we try and be really take our time with that welding. So from this point guys, so you now the rust here went down or goes down just below this panel. So I need to actually cut out just a little bit more down here. So I'm just gonna make a piece for that. Uh, I think we're okay here. I'm just gonna finish a little bit of welding there. And then I'm gonna move down here where we're 
actually rusted through front and back there and then there was a bit down here as well so this yeah this bedside was in pretty tough shape so i mean not not the best thing in the world to piece them together like this but i mean i'll get her done use some good primer on it and coat the inside as good as i possibly can and hopefully this thing will last a whole lot longer than uh, it did the last time i guess so I'm going to move on to this stuff. I'm, pr I'm probably not going to record any more of this. I mean, it's just more of the same cutting and welding and making little pieces. And it's all pretty straightforward. And then I'll have to, of course, jump over to the other side and do the same thing all over again. So maybe I'll just uh, leave that here for now and I'll bring you guys back when I've got all the welding done and I'm ready to maybe start some body work. Well, I finally finished up the welding on this side. So... We've put our wheel arch panel in. I ended up having to make an extension piece down here because the repair panel wasn't quite big enough. Um, so a patch in this corner back here and this corner as well. So this thing obviously turned into a lot more than I thought it was going to be from the start. You know, I thought it was going to be, I thought these panels were new enough that it was just going to be cleaning up rust and uh, repairing and painting and I didn't uh, realize I was going to be rebuilding the darn thing but is what it is so I'm going to give all of these welds a coat of Duraglass filler just get everything sealed up and I'm going to spin this thing around and do this whole debacle over again on the other side well it's Monday morning once again so I've got the box in the booth got it masked up I'm going to go ahead and get some primer on this thing so it'll be getting a couple of good coats of epoxy primer over all the bare metal and then a couple of coats of a urethane high build primer over everything else. So I'm going to get going on that and then I will bring you guys back and I'll show you what we're going to do next. So there's the outside of the bed all primed guys. So two coats of epoxy primer over all the bare metal. And then I've got two coats of high build urethane over all the bodywork, and then a third coat over the complete bed sides. So, my next step on this, I'll show you what I'm going to be using. So, I'm going to get up underneath that thing the best I possibly can and coat everything with POR15. Now, if you're not familiar with this stuff, um, it's fairly pricey. It's really, really good rust paint. Um, P-O-R. Paint over rust. That is what it stands for. Um, read the directions on this stuff. It is formulated. It is designed for painting on top of rust. And believe me, it turns it into concrete. This stuff hardens up like crazy. I've used it lots in the past. I've had really, really good luck with it when you use it for that purpose. If you try using this stuff over nice clean metal, it'll peel off. It won't stay. That's just the way it is. So I'm gonna pour some of this in my gun. I'm gonna thin it out a little bit just so it sprays, it's pretty thick. And then we're just gonna go in and I'm just gonna coat everything inside that box the best I can. Up inside the wheel arches where I did all the welding. I'm going to try and soak it down really good in there and then basically the inside of the bedsides and hopefully we can make this soul girl last for this guy this time.
So there's our box all coated. It's still cleared out in here. Um, so yeah, so you can see I went and sprayed that PR15 up inside there until that stuff is dripping out the bottom. So the biggest thing was getting way up in there over the wheel wells and way up inside these, these bedsides. Now, this stuff just hardens up so nice, especially on that rust. It uh, seems kind of indestructible once it's cured. So, like I say, I've had good luck with it. Um, not sponsored or anything like that, guys. I'm just showing you what I use. Uh, if you do use this stuff, if you have some left, make sure you clean the top of the can extremely good before putting the lid on. Because if you put that lid on with paint around that edge, you got to cut the can top of that can off to get it off because it will not come off, I guarantee it. So, with that done, I think we're going to move back to the truck and start taking the doors off so I can sandblast the inners. Well, here's a little peek at just how bad the inside of these doors are before I blast them. So, look at how rusty these things are. Well, the entire bottom is bad. Uh, the pinch weld doesn't appear to be swollen. So, that's a really good thing. That was something I checked initially. But once you get that rust in between those pieces of metal, it starts rust jacking, so it'll start jacking the pieces of metal apart then you've got a problem um, but I'm gonna wheel the sandblaster out here and start cleaning this one up and then I'll switch it out for the other door so I've got the doors all set up to get some epoxy primer put on the inside and then possibly get some paint on them before the end of the day so you can see I've got them all cleaned up as good as I could get them um, that scale was deep in there, just like the rest of the truck. So it took uh, a little bit of work with the sandblaster to get them completely cleaned out. But anyway, I'm going to give them a couple of good coats of epoxy and let that sit for half an hour. And then um, I still haven't for sure found a color for this, but I think I know what it is. So I'm going to start working on that while my epoxy sets up. Well, good morning, everyone. It is the next day again. So yesterday we got the bottoms of the doors painted. So that's taken care of. And then I actually painted the, uh, the steps and the rockers as well. Um, this one had some rust going up inside. So I figured I may as well just do them. So. Those doors can go back on. I'll probably wait till later today. I'll probably see if I can uh, use the phone friend option and get someone to give me a hand with those. Now, one thing on these doors, actually, these Dodge doors typically have a stud on each top hinge and then a bolt at the bottom. But whoever had put these aftermarket doors on, they didn't pull the studs out of the original doors, so they've just got four bolts, which makes them really difficult to put on when they've got the studs there. I can usually set these on a on something that's the right height and I can put them on myself, but being that there's just four bolts, I don't think I'm gonna be able to manage it on my own. So I think this morning I'm gonna move back to the box. I'm gonna start uh, prepping this up. So it's gonna be a whole bunch of blocking. So Probably won't record that, it's just be a bunch of me pushing the sand and block back and forth. That's uh, not real riveting stuff. Well, it's the next day, guys. We've got the Dodge Box in the booth. So that was, uh, that was a full day yesterday to prep this box to get it ready. I actually got it in and uh, just finished it up and masked it this morning. So, so she is ready to paint. So at this point, I just need to tack it off and start laying paint to it. So we're going to go mix up a little color. I'm going to kind of show you guys what's involved. 
in building a paint color out of what you see here. So I've got you on the old headband cam. So our color on this thing, so this was painted in a Ford color. The code was C6. Uh, so yeah, the color was, oh, I don't remember, freaking autumn sunset pearl or some crap. Um, so I put the code into my uh, paint system and it comes up with the formula. So I put in the amount I want to mix. In this case, we're mixing about three quarters of a quart. Um, should be enough because we're going to do the box and then I've got to do the a bunch of stuff on the cab as well. Uh, if we need to mix a little more, so be it. So we just start, start working down the list. So this is all done on weight. Uh, our first one is a J83, which is white. Now obviously these are very precise, they're very concentrated colors. This is a powder pearl. So we need to go to 461.6. Oh, this one's almost dead. And believe me, the cost of the stuff, you don't want to leave any in the can. I just replaced this one, $150. Two of these. so damn expensive to get mixed so this thing of pearl just cost me $150 I used uh, one and a uh, one and a third of these in mixing three quarters of a quart of paint and then we finish it off with the clear binder this is kind of always the main ingredient in these colors
Well, that's our first coat of base down there, guys. So, uh, something nice about this color. Now, often with these really heavy pearl colors, they can take four or five, six coats to achieve proper coverage. Well, I'll tell you what, one coat of that stuff, and it covers incredibly well for a pearl color. So, I'm happy about that because it's brutally expensive to mix. So, yeah, so at least I know, I mean, uh, I think a second coat and then maybe a quick drop coat and this is gonna be good. So, I'm gonna continue on putting base uh, and then uh, a couple coats of clear and be done with this part. Here's our box all painted, guys. So two and a half kind of coats of base coat, so two full coats and kind of a dust coat to even everything out. And then that's two good coats, a clear coat on there. So that all looks really good. Uh, I did have to mess around with the color a whole bunch. Uh, I had to add some yellow, I had to add some copper pearl to get it closer. Now that kind of brings me back to something I mentioned at the beginning of this job. So, you know, I had an idea what was used on this. Customer told me it was like an 01 Ford Escort color. So I found the color, but then, you know, you don't know what brand of paint this was mixed in. And then as you get into a job like this, you know, okay, so do I match this color or do I match this color or do I match this color? I don't know if this shows up on camera at all, but you can see this truck was painted in pieces, so nothing matches anything else. So now I'm going to be painting the bottom, but my box is going to have to match up to here. So I would probably blend these cab corners, so at least I know the box for sure. We'll match cab corners, which don't match, you know, doesn't match the door anyway. Um, if you ever hear of a painter refer to a Texas blend, that might be what I end up doing here. I might just sand this whole side so I can blend and make sure my color matches. So, again, you know, more time, more materials, but it's better than having something that doesn't match and kind of beat my head against the wall at this point with this thing so you know you can see we have different colors right so and on this i chose to do this fender as well so i'm gonna be getting color up here so on this one i may just sand right through the door i'll i'll decide when i get to it uh quite honestly I'm not going to disassemble it. I'm going to mask the door handle. I'm going to mask everything. I'll probably even mask this emblem because I don't want to get into a bunch more labor. I'm already kind of over my head in this thing upside down. But let's see, we've got a, got a pretty good dent there over the door handle. But I mean, what do you do? I'm not fixing that stuff. You know, these doors weren't lined up well. I've got them fitting much better than they were before I had them off. A uh, customer also said this thing was leaking water both sides, so I've sucked the tops of the doors in a little bit. So, throwing our gap out a little bit there, but I'd rather have the gap off a bit than, than him having a water leak in there. So anyway, more of my babbling. You know, just explaining what's going on, so. 
gives you guys an idea, gives my customer an idea what's, you know, what's been involved in getting this thing back into shape for them. But I think I'm going to go have a cup of coffee. When I come back, I will start prepping that truck. I think probably the next time you guys see it, I will have the truck in the booth. Hey guys, so I've got the old Dodge all masked up in the booth. Um, it's actually way past quitting time at this point. And I've been out here since 6.37 this morning. It's been a long day, but I figured I just wanted to keep forging ahead and get this painted today. Now, you know, I kind of joked earlier about the Texas blend, and that's where we kind of blend a whole bunch to uh, try and get a color match with these funny colors. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know that I am completely happy with the color on the box once I got it out of the booth. Um, so why am I continuing on painting this? I don't really have any other options for this color. So I figure I'm just going to get this painted, get the box on, see how it looks. And I mean, I hate to say it, but if I got to repaint it, then that way I'll just repaint the whole thing as a unit. But the truth is, like, I mean, I've got probably 10,000 color chips and there's nothing anywhere even close to this color. Um, typically, you know, I'll tell people I won't even touch these jobs if I don't have a color code for them because matching colors is, is just not worth the time you put into it. But the customer did tell me this was this 2001 Ford Escort color and I did find the color. I saw pictures of the car and it looked good. But once I mixed it up and put it on, it's, it's just not quite there. Uh, anyway, enough, enough of the babbling. So you can see I kind of cheated on the doors because I have a sharp body line here. So I did a little flip edge with my tape. So that way I can just kind of paint up to there so I can keep my color down here. And that just saves having to take the door all apart, you know. Not a big deal taking it apart when it's but, but when it's not part of uh, what you're charging for then sometimes you try and cut a few little corners anyway guys i'm gonna get this thing painted we'll come back in the morning and see what we think i tell you guys these kind of colors can be such a pain so, I still have one more coat of clear to go. But so, you can see, with blending the color, so I've got color, of course, the entire bottom, because I had primer up to here. And then I just put some color on the back of the cab so that the box will match when it goes on. But, you know, it looks fine. This side actually looks funny. I've noticed I've got this one different light bulb here and it throws colors out horribly. So. But here, the same thing. I only put color to kind of right there. Didn't put any color there. So when you're blending these colors, they're, uh, it's a lot different. Anyway, one more coat of clear. We'll put the box on in the morning and Maybe we'll be okay. Well, everybody, there she is, all cleaned up, ready for the customer. So, I gotta admit, this job kicked my ass. It uh, turned into way more work than I had, uh, let's say way more work than I'm actually charging for it, but you know what? I mean, that's, that is what it is. It's my, my choice to, uh, go above and beyond sometimes um you know i just wanted it to be right for the customer so what i've done since you guys saw it now obviously it's all painted put together so i've showed you this before so this is an old pressure pot i fill this thing up with used motor oil now before i finished everything up before i put the tail lights in and stuff i took that pressure pot and sprayed the inside of these panels as good as I possibly could until oil is pouring out the bottom of the truck. 
So that's going to seep into everything in here. And Louie, I just washed this truck. Ah, can't get good help these days. So yeah, up inside the doors, inside the rockers. So this thing is leaking oil out of everything, but that's going to seep into all those pinch welds. It's going to seep into everywhere where I've drilled holes for mud flaps. So you can see I've added these Long John's, uh, Husky Long John floor mats. I'm a big fan of these. Um, unfortunately, I guess they're discontinued now, but I recommended them to the customer and he found a set. So I know for the young guys, these aren't really cool, but I mean, as far as protection goes, you know, you're protecting all this lip inside. You know, they hang down nice, so you're really protecting the bottom of the truck. Same back here, so I hung the back ones down pretty far, but I want to make sure that they're totally protecting the, the paintwork back here. So, and you know, like I, I've got to say, guys, too, I am not 100% happy with this color but it was, there was just nothing more I could do with it. Um, unfortunately, not knowing what the last guy painted it with, you know, it's funny, like you look here, you know, I fixed the dent, I painted right here, which is funny, looking through the camera, this looks a little darker, but to the naked eye, this looks perfect to the hood. So, you know, I'm happy there, but then you look up here, you know, like look at the door compared to the roof, like, I'm thinking my color probably matched that roof perfectly. But anyway, guys, it is what it is. Hopefully the customer is happy with it. If he's not, well, we'll just have to revisit it and I'll have to see if I can come up with a solution. But I think she looks really good. Uh, Thursday today, I actually started this job last Monday morning. So it's just about two weeks. Um, you know. I think there was one half day in there, but you know, a bunch of 12 hour days as well. So this stuff's a lot of work. And if I get this video out on time, which will be tomorrow, which will be Friday, February 2nd, that is my birthday. So 51 years old, I still have no idea what I want to do with my life. But as always guys, thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment on the video, hit subscribe if you haven't done that. I do appreciate it, it helps me keep this thing going. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Louie, you're leaving dirty footprints on this man's truck. What do you have to say for yourself? Get off of there. <laughs> Yeah, get a shop cap, great idea.